uh, dread, dreadful work. A bell tolling at dead of night was a sig signal for the slaughter. Protestants by thousands sleeping quietly in their homes, trusting to the plight honor of their king, were dragged forth without warning and murdered in cold blood. Okay, explain that for me. What does that say? They were killing the Christians. You know. Who, who, who were killing them? Uh, kings of, uh, the king of France. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you see? So we're looking at a time when leaders now we're living in a time today when the, especially Western world, is called um, the Protestant Christianized nations. You know that, right? That's where we are today. So this is where now the kings, queens, whoever leader, they accept, they, 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 they had to accept Christianity. So, this is where the Church of God now uh, sort of wane, because they kill out all the leaders, and they took over as the leader. So this is the true infiltration of God's Church, because all the kings, and they were all Christians, so they could manage the political and the religious world. Go ahead. Okay. And, when the, and when power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and, and with anger and with death and with the beast of the earth, here is given the exact time in which the imperial and papal Rome would hold sway over the earth to kill the followers of Christ by means of these various forms of cruelty. Again, know that the perfection of the scriptures using the pronoun them, meaning both imperial and papal Rome, also civil and religious authority. Yes. So we know pagan Rome was a Roman Christ, and when the disciples were being martyred, a change to paper or ecclesiastical home. That was a rough time to, to be a Christian. <laughs> Definitely. And that will repeat itself. So, uh, 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 uh. so I want you to hit that point now. Because what you say there is what we read in Revelation when it says, a torn beast will make an image so, the image is really a copy of this that will come on stage <coughs> a little from now. Full bloom. Full bloom. And so, as God's people, we have to know what God says about that time. <coughs> and his involvement with the church because it's going to come a way that is very subtle and a lot of Christians will just be at church now like Seventh day Adventists will just be there and say okay they won't join this they won't join that but let me tell you something they are going to bring on some devious and some subtle and deceptive things that no ordinary church go won't escape it. That's how serious it is. Because they are going to make it away. And they're not going to come, you know, like to, to scare people. They're going to bring all the churches together. And so you're going to hear conferences and church heads are going to come together and say, okay, we can 
higher no differences. Let us just go because we all agree with this, that, and the other. And so it will be easy for the leaders to lead the people into compromising their faith. Yes. And any leader that is not standing on the word of God right now, whichever, well, especially Seventh-day Adventists, because as the Roman people going to push it the same way, the political, as I told you, the head of government are Christians. The head of government are Christians. And so the influence of the church and the state is right up there on par. And um, <clears throat> we have to stand on what the Bible says. <clears throat> You're going to be told to, well, as a matter of fact, certain book you can't even read now, anything about the Pope. You can't read in the church because, you know, it's not, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't fit the status quo. It doesn't fit the status quo. Brother Craig, I see you twisting like you have something to say. No, that's not okay. Just listen. Just listen. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So, that's where we are. Um, so, we need to look at the, the fourth part of the earth. We need to look on the fourth part of the earth and that might bring us up to up to our time, and then we, we might have time for question and comment. So, Rome was given power over a fourth part of the earth. This is not talking about, where's my stuff now? Um, let me see. Are coming back, are coming back to that. Uh, I have some stuff. Okay, let's see. All right, this is not talking about. Uh, Mom. Mom. Um, uh, you remember I showed you some map, some world map? A map? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, a physical map you were showing us, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to use that to show you the fourth part that is talking about. Let me see if we find it. to you is that to show you. Uh, but let me talk about, let's talk about them. You remember we showed Babylon, Media, Persia. Let me go there. Greece and Rome from Daniel. And we were talking about the territory, the actual territory. Yeah, right. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, here's a picture of Daniel 7. Let's read Daniel 7 for me. Let's read the first six verses. Let's cover the, the beast. It will cover all the beasts from here to here. To, from Babylon to Rome. Read that for me while I look for it. Daniel 7. Daniel, you mean what you have up, the present? No. Work? No. 
just Daniel 7 itself? Uh, uh, you have that correct, Daniel 7? No, I will look for it though. Read from verse 1. I want to cover the, cover the beast. Babylon, me, the Persia, Greece, Rome. Alright, well, Daniel 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head while on his bed. And he wrote down the dreams telling the main facts. Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And suddenly another beast, a second like a bear, it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. And after this I looked, and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge lion teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I was considering the horns and there was another horn a little one coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots and there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words continue oh that's good <clears throat> That's good, that's good. I'm looking for a flash drive. That's good. Um, but anyway, why is it this one? Chart 2. Alright, discuss that till we come. I go for a flash drive. So if I, I run in for a flash drive right quick. Running for a flash drive, okay. Yeah. Alright. Um, we're almost at that mark, so yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you can let's discuss that. We might just close with that if we can get. But I'm just okay. gonna look for the flash drive. I'm gonna go back to my um to the chart here.
Which chart you seeing now? Uh, we're still seeing the same uh, world history and prophetic symbols. Yeah. Okay. Do you see the beast that you read about? Okay. The lion, the, the, the bear. What about a lion? After examining it very close, make sure you see everything what the lion has. Because we have to deal with the symbols in a very detailed manner. So, like the lion had two wings. That has to be explained. Oh, come. Say the wings on the beast. All the beasts had six wings. Remember the beasts are on the throne, they all have six wings. Remember what we said those were? No? <coughs> Alright, no problem. Can deal with it. Yeah, right at the time now, so I'm just going to see if I can show you something that we can uh, sort of get us uh, familiar with it. And then uh, next week when we come, we can uh, clinch it from there. Alright, let me see what I have here. <coughs> Alright, um, let me stop sharing that. And I'm going to share this one. This is some chart that I put together. It's actually a production of exactly what is in the Bible. So, but every every little part of it uh, is necessary for us to uh, explain. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh my. All right, <clears throat> as I said, the Bible use the same things at times to bring out some points. Now last time I showed you this, I was holding it, you remember? You remember when I was holding it up? Yeah, yes, I think so, on the back seat. Yes. So, <clears throat> I was showing it, I uh, put it in color, it's a map of the ancient world. Uh, next time I'm going to try to get a world map on it so that we can look on a world map and see the same place ancient and modern but there's a particular interest that God 
has with the Middle East. We might hear about the Middle East and you know all comes to our mind is the Jews and the Arabs but it's God's promised land. Anyway, in regards to what we are studying, uh, Babylon in the form of the lion in red, as I put it, occupied this territory. If you notice Egypt is here, you notice once you see the Red Sea, you know that the Gaza Strip and Israel, Palestine, all of that is there. Um, <clears throat> out here is India, there is China and all that. So Rome occupied as the world, the first world empire occupied this region. Right up here would be you have the river Euphrates, you have Babylon, which is now Iraq. I'll show you that on another map, but I'll just give you this outline. And we just have a few things that you can see. So Rome occupied here, all in red. A little round here, all in red. Media Persia took over. Media Persia in blue would go around the same. If you look carefully, you will see a blue border too. Media Persia come around. Media Persia has maybe took a little part in Asia right here. Uh, in, so that every, every empire tried to add on. Alexander the Great, Babylon, eh? Yeah, go ahead. Babylon, Media, Persia, which is the next one? It's in your Bible, yeah, Daniel 7. Oh. What is that? Media Persia and uh, oh. the other one. You have to look in your Bible, you don't have to guess it. Mm. But, but where is that again now? I just read it, Daniel. I just read it, Daniel 7. Babylon? Yeah. What? Babylon first. Babylon. Babylon yeah. first. Right. Yeah. And then after that Read man, yeah. read Daniel seven. Uh, Daniel 7 1. You remember, you said the wind blew upon the sea. That's war. Wind blew upon the sea, and then there come up these powers. The lion. Yeah, and an eagle's, eagle's wings. Is Daniel. Yes, the, the lion. It looks like a lion. Yes. Eagle's wings. Okay. Alright, and watch his wings that were plucked off. Okay. And they were lit lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. Okay, okay. I think you are the corresponding the corresponding image to 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 sort of understand that. And that is would be the would be Daniel chapter two. Because Daniel chapter two of the image and it would give you the names. But these... Okay. The, the, the big statue. Okay, uh, yes. Right. Daniel chapter 2. So Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamt and he dreamt of a statue. And you recall what the head represents? The yeah, head was Babylon. Ah, oh, well that will help us with the name then. Because what Daniel shows he shows the beast that correspond with those. So the lion would be Babylon. And then the next one on the image 
would be what? On the image, the statue. The next one after the head. Yeah. You want to look on it, Daniel 2? Let me see if we find a picture for you. Yeah, we need that picture. That's why I'm trying to find that picture. I would tell everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's in Daniel 2 if you read it. But I, it, it, Daniel 2 don't show the picture though, you know? Oh, uh, what the verse tell you, Babylon? Me, the Persia, Greece, or who? Babylon. All right. All right, since time is running, I'm going to just go over this and then you can refresh that and next week we can go more details because time is on us. So let me tell you what it is. It is Babylon first empire who ruled this area, this territory, taking over uh, or was defeated. Understand that, that when they occupy this area they have to guard themselves because they expect the enemy to over. But if Daniel, um, Babylon was overthrown by Medo Persia. And they occupy the same or the, the territory, but they try to expand. Now, Medo Persia is in blue. Now, then come oh, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, and he was represented as what on the, in Daniel here. Daniel 7. What was he represented as? Oh, the, he was the, um, which one? The, not the bear? Um, the third one. The third one? Yeah. That's the third beast in Daniel 7. Is it the leopard? Yes, exactly. The leopard, the four-headed leopard. Ready four wings, two pairs of wings, was Alexander the Great. And if you know anything about Alexander the Great, he was a young man in his 20s, died in his 30s, and he was ruthless in terms of taking over territory. So when he overthrew Medo Persia, the Medes and the Persians, he expanded, and I put him in, in brown. Now you can see that he expanded into India and he took over the whole of that and come all the way around, took over the same territory that um, that um, <clears throat> made a Persia and Babylon occupied. And then he move on up, going up to Europe, right here, that's Alexander. And he cried tears when he couldn't conquer any more places, right? And he died young. And remember, when he died, he didn't have any son, any heir, he didn't have anybody to take over his kingdom. So what happened? Yes, but in this case it's four. Four, and that's why you have the four heads. The, the leopard is really showing the, the generals, four heads, means four government in this case. So <clears throat> that's, before, that's before Rome, because it's in the time of Rome when head started represent religious bodies because the papal power was a horn head combination and the horn was the civil government and the head was the government. So what we have is Medo Persia, I mean Greece, Greece is um, Alexander territory and Greece would have taken over all the territory and expanded 
into India. Of course, when we go to the map, you will see the names of the places better. And then he went up a little into Europe. All right. Rome. I have Rome in black. Rome, when it came on, it expanded. What beasts represent Rome? We talk about him a while ago when we talk about the, the um, pink, the pink, the pale horse. What, what in Daniel? What, what the beast Daniel uh, some use? Huh? What beast? The fourth yeah. beast. Yeah, but what was the fourth beast? What type of beast was it? What beast? Dreadful, terrible, strong, huge. Yeah, that's that was it. It's a leopard, like a leopard. No, is that, a lion. Huh? No. Is that nondescript? Is that okay. terrible? The one that terrible and, and Trump will play. He said no. Rome is always a nondescript because it's a mixture of Rome and what we have here, Christianity and Jewish law. And he used anyone, so it should it be real. It's a hypocrisy. It's a hypocritical and a sly movement or institution. So watch Rome. Rome took over in black. You see the circle I put here? Rome took over all the territories of Alexander. You know Alexander took over the most. I watch Rome. Rome went all the way up to Germany, London, all over Europe. All the way here, Rome took over almost uh, two two thirds of the of the ancient world. Some some part of Africa, of course, and and all that <coughs> in there. So the reason why we have to go over these is that history and prophecy go hand in hand. That is how God write these things. So, and also type. In other words, you, in other words, when you're studying these things, it must have a repeat. It's called typology. You have, must have a picture that is representing something in the New Testament. For example, a good example is a ceremonial system, the sacrificial lamb represent Christ, the sacrificial lamb. So that's how God set it up. Now, Rome, in the original, in the ancient world, had most of the area, per se. All right? While um, the Bible says he occupied one fourth of the earth. So it couldn't, it wasn't talking about the territory. It wasn't talking about the territory. And in, when, he, when he was fully in operation here, and it wasn't all, and, and in our time, well, in the modern world, it wouldn't be, it, it didn't amount to, in other words, Rome, after they were defeated, didn't occupy all. <clears throat> or even be, af, before they were defeated, after Rome was divided, the ten toes, Europe was divided, Rome didn't occupy a quarter. So I'm just saying that to show that it is regarding time. It is regarding time, period. So we have to find, when we come back, we'll find the period of time that represents 
the quarter in time that Rome occupied, occupied in the Christian dispensation. All right? So that's where we'll stop. And so we thank God for his mercies. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Verse 20 after, Greg, can you bring us home? Yeah, yeah, okay. Just on a, a, a note, um, I'm not sure if I will be able to attend next week's meeting. I'll be in Jamaica. And um, I'm not quite certain where I will be at 6.30 Jamaica time. Mm -hmm. um, so, depending upon circumstances, I may or may not be on the call. Yeah. Okay. And is next week we're falling back? Or the other week? Is it? Yeah, Sunday. Next Sunday. The sixth. Next Sunday night. The sixth. Or, or, or the day. The sixth. Because today, tomorrow is what? The first? 31st. No, the, tomorrow is the 31st. Okay. So that would mean then if you're fall, we're falling back from the Saturday night. Mm hmm. Okay, so that means that we'll be on the same time, Jamaica time, the Sunday. Uh -huh. Are you going back an hour? Yeah, I know we are ahead of Jamaica by an hour. Yeah, so we'll, be, we'll be the same time. On the same time. All right. Well, I'll see how, you know, what my schedule is like. But yeah. uh, just wanted that you be aware. Oh, not a problem. So, all right. So, praying, any special re prayer requests? Um, our sister, what, give me your, food, your name again. Vivette. 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 Is it? Is it? Nice. Is it? Any particular requests? Prayer requests? Just for strength and for um, understanding because this is not a this not an easy topic. No, it's not. By no, no means. It's mm -hmm. not both. Okay. All right. Well, then let's go to the Lord and, and, and give thanks. Our Heavenly Father, we again want to express our gratitude for being able to come together this evening and to not only fellowship, Lord, but to to look into your word and to try to glean the wisdom contained therein and uh, be in a position to apply it to our lives and share with others, Father. Thank you for our Brother Linden's preparation and uh, his, his ability to facilitate this rather complex topic of the seven seals. And uh, we look forward to getting further clarification and uh, a better understanding as we go forward. Thank you for bringing our sister Vivette into our midst and we mm. appreciate her contribution. Father, we pray that she would continue to, to seek, to attend and to express and share with us as we go forward. We pray for those that are not here, I said you would bless them where they are, Father. We pray for for both Linda and for his family and I ask that you will continue to bless them and, and use them mightily in, in your endeavors. Pray for Lloyd and his family as well and uh, for you to just keep on keeping on, Lord. Mm -hmm. We are indeed just so grateful for, for the ability to establish an up close and personal relationship with you mm -hmm. and we want to strengthen that relationship day by day. We want to be able to to know you more and more so that we can love you more and more and walk with you more closely day by day. And so, Father, as we now depart, we pray that you just bless us, bless us, and give us a good night's rest. And mm. if you be not come, raise us up tomorrow, Father, and take us out into this fallen world again and use us as ambassadors for Christ as we seek to be about your business of bringing others into your kingdom. We pray all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. 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 You Thank have a you safe too. trip. Thank you, yes. my sister. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. God be with you. Amen. Williams. Yes, darling. Love, joy, and, and peace. I hope, I hope I can join next week because this is really interesting, but my goodness. Yes. yes.
It, it, yeah, it's, that it's, interpretation is always, always um, not, a It's not for the faint of heart, for sure. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a matter of sticking to it. Stick to it. Uh, yeah. The Holy Spirit will just hope. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you. Join in, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. One love. All right, folks. Love and, love and peace.